Tim Chartier is a math and computer science professor at Davidson College in North Carolina. Joining us live tonight with some bracketology, some math, what do you call it, uh, math? Math madness? Arch mathness. Mathness, <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, always great to see you, Tim. Uh, sorry about the Wildcats. I was rooting for you guys. Um, my bracket was busted early. Let's take a look at my picks. Um, if I had been right, I would have been a genius, but um, I was really <laughs> wrong. I had Ohio State. Um, Gonzago is out, so um, busted. Uh, let's look at your picks, Tim. Are you disappointed? Because you're also out of it. Yeah, it's been a hard year, but it shows that we have a lot more to study with March Madness. And as a professor, it means I have a lot more work I can do with my students. So that's a win in my book. <laughs> exactly. All right. So Kansas is the only number one seed still in it, Tim. When was the last time a number one seed was knocked out before the Elite Eight? The last time that we had only one number one seed in the Elite Eight was 2011. And we've never had an Elite Eight with no number ones in it at all. Wow, so that would be a big deal. Uh, we're watching that one closely tonight. You also said Houston and Villanova were your dark horses at the start, and you've been right about that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate your pointing something <laughs> I was right about. <laughs> That's right. You know, I'm not here to just dig you. I, uh, I, I know there's a lot of math involved, and you guys have put in a lot of work. Yeah. Um, last year, I think it was important to note, um, as everybody was making their picks, we were in the middle of the pandemic, and it was dark times. Um, that played a factor in, in how things played out on the court. Is that still happening this year? Yes, one thing that's important to keep track of is even in mid-January, 154 teams were affected by COVID protocols. And even at that time, 18 of the tournament teams had, be, had been affected by COVID. So even this year, we have this kind of COVID madness playing a part in the tournament, which is probably partially why it's difficult to look at records and statistics, because it's like you have super injury going on with the teams. Mm -hmm. Right. It's difficult to add that to your calculations. I'm curious what lessons you guys have learned so far as you, you work through your models um, that you're applying in class and that you guys are discussing about where things stand. One of the biggest things we wanted to do for several years is actually integrate injury. And COVID can be looked at as that type of thing, because injury is mainly when someone's not playing. This year really shows that we need to put some time into that. So even now, I've had multiple meetings for next year's March Madness and the methods that we'll use. So how will you change your methods? Give us an example. One of the big things is that you can have you can do the statistics to figure out how does a team play with a player on the court versus the player being off the court. And then you can extrapolate that to figure how much less the team will score. And in certain ra ranking methods, you can actually change the ratings by the, the amount of change in the score with that player not playing. So that's what we're hoping to do. Oh, really interesting. The other thing that caught my attention, uh, you said that people are a lot less interested now in <laughs> really who will win why is that well i think we're interested when our pick for the right. whole tournament is still in the tournament and the problem is so many of our picks that were kind of made a lot of <laughs> sense are gone so in some sense we still really enjoy it but at another level it can be harder when your bracket is truly busted which i usually don't say but this year i think many of us have busted brackets it was after day one tim i think everybody was like oh my gosh i mean i had longwood so go figure but i mean i think st peter's probably busted a lot of people's brackets what was the percentage on that like four people picked four percent of people pick them? Yes, it was a, yeah, it was only 4% of people pick St. Peter's. And then you had all the other upsets. So to get all of that perfect was just, a few people did for a while, but it's just not going to happen. It's just too difficult to perceive. Yep. And we're looking at your final uh, pick. You've run the models. You think Villanova? Yeah, we have Villanova. Again, we have some tight games coming up. And so it's very likely that, that I might not even have the championship game correct, but it'll be a lot of fun to watch. But Villanova is where I grew up in that area. I'm not going with my heart, but I was really happy to see the model come out that way. Uh, math madness. We're all um, hoping for some nail biters because that's what the fun <laughs> is all about, right? Some good basketball, some good sportsmanship. Uh, Tim, always great to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, good luck Thank to you, the Marty. teams that are still in it. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.